We've just walked into the main nave, and it's this enormous, gorgeous space. But what is interesting when you walk in here, and you have this emphasis of drawing you towards the apse. Okay. Well, the, the colonnade on either oh, colonnade. side uh, helps that enormously, as Definitely. well as yeah. the, the clear story mm -hmm. uh, above, which really does create this beautiful rhythm and draws mm -hmm. our eye with light straight down to the, to the altar. But it also gives you an idea of what a 5th century AD basilica would have looked like, and perhaps in many ways gives you an idea of the basilicas that you would have found in and around the area of the Roman Forum. This is really, in a sense, a Christianization of, those, of those architectural forms. Mm -hmm. You've also got a whole symbol of authority attached to this as well, given that the pagan basilicas are places of law, yes. where the judge could well be the emperor if needed. Also, if you think about it, if you are bankrolling a new religion in the 4th century AD, perhaps you're going to build something that you know how to build, these were proven spaces that could mm -hmm. hold a tremendous number of people. Exactly. So really, instead of the altar there, we might actually see the emperor seated. For ancient uh, basilica, you would have had a chair at the back, okay, yeah. the cathedra, where the emperor or the judge would have been able to pronounce his pronouncements, just like today the bishop or the titular cardinal or the pope or something of that sort there has a tendency to do that today. And maybe even in, in the old pagan basilicas, you probably would have had a little altar in honor of Minerva, mm -hmm. the goddess of knowledge. So what are the oldest elements in the, in the room? Well, the oldest elements that we can see in the room, heavily restored, it has to be said, is the triumphal arch that we can see here with some beautiful 5th century AD mosaics of the life and times of the Madonna. And then the mosaics that we see just above the, the capitals, just these, below the clear story. These again are 5th century AD, very heavily restored. And again, you've got a whole series of stories with these beautiful uh, frames, these squares above the actual columns of many important stories from the Old Testament. Abraham, yeah. Isaac, Moses, Joshua. And again, perhaps you've got this idea of you're coming in here, you're finding the Judaic roots of Christianity, the Old Testament. Which lead you to. Which then lead you to the coming of the Messiah. Interesting. Okay, and the mother of God, who is none other than Mary herself. We're, we're approaching now the high altar, which is incredibly elaborate. The altar where the Pope or his delegate can give mass behind the birth of Christ, the Dormition, yes. here of Mary, and then her in heaven being crowned here in this wonderful sort of like imperial sort of like uh, throne of the mandala that we have. Yes, here. look at it. Uh, there. What, what I see when I look at this, and this is something that certainly can be debated, is I think with this Roman art that we see in the latter part of the 13th century, Pietro Cavallini, uh, Giotto, okay, Cimabue also, mm -hmm. you're also beginning to see reverberations of the Renaissance. Often we talk about the Renaissance being a 15th century mm -hmm. art movement mm -hmm. uh, here, but I think you can see that we've got a sense of depth it's just of beginning realism. to develop. It's yeah. just beginning to develop. There is a kind of attention to the physicality mm -hmm. of the body. That's right. And also a sense of space yeah. and depth. And also perhaps the portraiture of yes. the figure's Thanks. sense of individuality. Yeah. And you've also got a sense of landscape in some ways, a sense of architecture yeah. in some ways. So if you look at the Madonna's face there, yes, there is an element that says it's strongly Byzantine, but there's also an element there that, that is a tender young woman. Absolutely. Okay. And I think there's a willingness to, to experiment and to move beyond the traditions mm -hmm. uh, that had been relatively stable yes. for some um, time. And I think here, to a degree, a mosaic is perhaps a little bit more difficult to create that sense of depth and movement that you're going to see with Renaissance, but I think you could, you're seeing an inkling here. And but you know, th those figures are seated. Mm -hmm. Mary and Christ are, are mm -hmm. they're not in, in the way that some, some of the more Byzantine elements are not flat, that's right. Are not flat. They, you know, you can, there's a sense of their gravity. It's a sense of their mass mm -hmm. in space. Um, and the way, and a little bit of foreshortening actually. Yeah, definitely. Um, and of course this will bloom uh, into the work of Masaccio. Mm -hmm. It will bloom that's into right. the work of, uh, of, of, the, of the high renaissance ultimately. Mm -hmm. But of course at this moment, we have no idea where that's going. No, true. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe we can just see a fledgling, sort of like very fledgling uh, seed yeah. being sown here. Certainly an openness to, uh, to a physicality that I think was more uh, absolutely rejected mm -hmm. uh, centuries earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah.